in this everything is very dark and spikier, sharper. It's a pretty big hint that the Ubisoft logo as you start the game up almost instantly fades to red. Some are gonna like this different tone, some aren't. I personally didn't mind it that much. I found myself constantly humming along with the score. It isn't all heavy metal. There's also this tune with some very grim piano. I do think it did get to be a bit smothering, suffocating, you know? Like, there are points where you just want to wholeheartedly shout at the game, CHEER UP! I would also like to express my displeasure with the fact that the prince is now speaking so much, because apparently when he stopped with the whole inner monologue of does she like me like me and why aren't I butchier, he taunts his enemies and he doesn't quite have a real good grip on the situation. He'll yell the completely inappropriate thing on occasion. You know, like two seconds into a boss fight, he might yell, okay, on to the next one. Your enemies do the same. Before you've even started trying to hit them, they might say, stop hurting me. I also quite like how some of the weaker of the Island of Time troops may threaten you with the words, you have made many enemies today. I'm not kidding, I know Father Time. He and I are like this tight. I think the most inadvertently funny thing the prince taunts with in this game is he'll actually say to enemies, you will pay for this transgression. I mean, I know I'm the one who came to this island, I'm the one trying to mess with the cosmic order of things, but you've got a sword, and you're gonna fight me, so you're the bad guy. Yeah. It's just really reassuring that the Prince of Persia, a quite mighty realm back then, can maintain such a perspective. Now obviously you can't talk about this game for terribly long without getting into the freeform fighting. Almost the only thing that this game adds, other than more enemies, more enemy types. Basically, you can now do more elaborate combos, so can everybody else, and they do, constantly. So you'll be fighting really low-level enemies and just blocking their attacks, just waiting for them to end this five-hit chain combo so you can just hit them once. It's irritating. You can now also pick up a second weapon, and that could be a sword, a, an axe, a mace, whatever an enemy drops or you find in a weapon container rack, I guess you'd call it. You know, in the first one, your secondary weapon was basically the Dagger of Time. In this one, if you come across a great looking rack, go ahead and grab it. And the same goes for racks of weapons. Yes, you can do more moves in this, but honestly, you just wind up spamming the most powerful ones and really easily winning fights. Also, in Sands of Time, the amount of combat is very appropriate in ratio to the puzzles and to the overall length. You don't feel like you're just constantly fighting. In this you do. At points, combat feels as if it is absolutely non-stop, and I honestly have gotten sick of it almost instantly. I mean, I don't play for more than maybe an hour before I am sick of fighting in this game. It's just a nuisance. Either you're just coming across an enemy and you just spam some powerful moves, take them out, or you spend a lot of time trying to fight them. See, where the first one had slow lumbering enemies that tower over you, this one has them be your size or smaller, usually. And they're now just fast. And I don't just mean that they attack fast, I also mean that they dodge and jump around really fast. And it's just annoying. I mean, I love 
good, challenging fencing in games. I am always on the lookout for stuff like that. But in this, most of the challenge comes from you accidentally being stuck in a long combo just as a new enemy appears or just as you realize you're being attacked from the other side or something or you not being able to hit enemies because they're moving so fast and oh yeah you're supposed to slow down time so you're on equal footing with them what's the point of that? I'm sorry but is that any different from let's say a shooting game where you have to press a certain button before you shoot an enemy. You know, take aim, press that button, then press the trigger. What's the point? It doesn't take skill, it's just an extra step. Basically the fighting in this is like in your average arcade fighting game. I don't have any problem with arcade fighting games, but I don't personally think that it completely works with the entirely free camera and range of movement and maybe also because of the otherwise heavy focus on puzzles and puzzle solving. I mean if the fights were more fun and the game was clearly more about fighting then it would maybe work better. I'm also not a fan of that crow guy. He just keeps reappearing. He's not tough. He's not fun to fight. He's just there and then you fight him and then he reappears somewhere else. Then when you get there you fight him again. But yeah, the freeform fighting and the new enemies are about it for new stuff. The only two things this adds puzzle-wise are these banners that sort of break your fall by you sticking your sword into them and gliding down them. And then these ropes that you can grab onto, climb, jump away from, and you can also use them to launch yourself into a wall run. And that's it. Sands of Time adds way more, so does the Two Thrones. I'm pretty sure it doesn't even add any new traps, although it modifies the spikes to where in the Sands of Time, as in, as in the original, you have to slowly walk through spikes to not get hurt. In this one, you have to rush through them. It's like you stand on it and they realize you're there and if you don't move right after you got on to where the spikes will come up, you'll get hit by the spikes. Also, honestly, the rope in Sands of Time for its very short appearance was much more fun than the ropes in this. In this one, they were nice enough to include subtitles because no one could hear what was being said in the first one. I don't know why they abandoned the subtitles for the next one. It's not like you could hear what was being said anymore in that one. But yeah, too many of the fights are just the enemy attacking with this chain of attacks and you don't parry, you still just hold down the right mouse button and block, block, and block while you wait for them to finish off the chain, and then there's the odd chain, which looks like it's over, but ah, there was one more attack, so you stop blocking, start to attack, and then they hit you. And then you start over on the blocking. Among the enemies you fight are demonatrices, some of whom have stolen Xena's chakra. I can imagine many hate these chicks, but I actually feel a little sorry for them. It must be really boring hanging up in the ceiling just waiting for someone to try to conquer the island of time and then you know dropping down in front of you it also does take a little of the fun out of killing them that they keep repeating how much they like being hurt i don't know i guess you can't go emo and dark without going s and m too something that is very cool and does deserve mentioning in this other than what is admittedly a pretty nice range of attacks, and not all of them are tied to combos, is that while it isn't bloody, the gore in this is quite nice. You can decapitate enemies, slice them in half, and usually the camera will go in closer, the game will enter slow motion to really capitalize on the coolness of it, and that's pretty good. My one problem with the whole slow-mo thing in this one is that it affects the music also, and that just sounds weird. I've said a lot of negative about this, but honestly, 
it is still fun. The puzzles are great.